The next section is half angle formulas. So let's zoom in over here and give you guys some formulas. Okay, so here are the half angle formulas. And this section uses tangent. So I'll give you the formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, so let's take a look for the sine. Sine of one half x. I'm using x because the problems in this section used x. So sine of one half x is equal to uh, the square root of one minus cosine x over two. So write down these formulas. And then the next one is for cosine. So cosine of one half x, that's going to be the square root, that's the square root <laughs> of one plus cosine x over two. And then there's a formula for tangent. So tangent one half x is equal to the square root of one minus cosine x over, oh no, that was kind of ugly. Over, also ugly, oh my, better. <laughs> one plus cosine x, there we go. Okay, so you can see the tangent ones like the sine over cosine because tangent is sine over cosine. So anyways, I'll give you guys some time to uh, write this down. So let me pause the video here. All right, so let's uh, go on to the problems. Half angle formulas. Okay, so for this one, it says if cosine of x is equal to 9 tenth, then what is the positive value of cosine 1 half x in simplest radical form with a rational denominator? So what is the formula for cosine 1 half x? Let me write it out. According to what we just wrote, Cosine one half x would be one plus cosine x over two. So all we have to do is plug it into this formula. So all we need for this formula is cosine. So let's see, what did they give us? They gave us cosine, how wonderful. So we don't have to draw a triangle. If they gave us sine or they gave us tangent, you would have to do the triangle process to get cosine. However, they gave us cosine, so all we have to do is plug it in. So let's plug it in. So square root 1 plus the cosine that they gave us, so 9 tenths. Over 2. All inside the square root. Okay. Then we continue simplifying. So we need to work on the top part of the fraction first. So it has a one plus nine tenths. Let's make that one into 10 over 10 because it needs to have the same denominator as the nine over 10. I'm going to continue it over here. So 10 tenths plus nine tenths becomes 19 on the top and the 10 stays as your denominator and we still have it over 2. So all I did right here was I added the 10 tenths plus 9 tenths. I just added them together, got 19 on the top and 10 on the bottom and then it's still over 2. So when you have a fraction being divided by another number, you just combine the two denominators. So it's 19 over 10 times 2 is 20. So now I have square root of 19 over 20. Okay. Are there any questions? I'll give you guys a chance to uh, ask questions or write it down. I'm just going to enter 19, a square root of 19 over 20 into the box. So this is my final answer. All right, so let's enter in square root of 19 over 20. Square root of 19 over 20. Oops, it's not correct. I think we just need to simplify it. Okay, so if they want us to simplify this. Hmm. Let's go back to our photos. Go over here. If we want to simplify this, 19 is a not simplifiable. But then the 20, I guess it's, 
Okay, I guess let's take a look at Mac up. Oh no, it's gonna cover it. Okay, I'll just write what we had up here. Square root of 19 over 20. So I'm guessing they want us to simplify the 20 part. So 20 is four times five, right? And so four can be square rooted. So how should I write this out to make it look better? Okay. So we can split up the fraction like this. Um, we can essentially take the four and move it into a different radical and the 19 and the five stay in the original. So we do that because the four is a perfect square number. And I guess if it's a perfect square number, they want us to simplify out of our radical. And then from here, the square root of one fourth is just the square root of one over the square root of four. So that would be one half. And then the radical is 19 over five still. Although that looks really weird, but I'm guessing that that's what they want. And we can try that out and see if that's, um, yeah, let's try it out and see if that's what Delta math wants for us to take out that fraction one half. So let's go back and type that in one half radical 19 over five. So one half radical 19 over five. As weird as that looks, is that right? No? Okay, what do they want? Oh, okay, they didn't want a radical at all like on the bottom. Okay, so that's what they meant, my bad. Let's do a better example where I do what they want. <laughs> okay. So if cosine of theta is one half, what is the positive value of sine of one half in simplest radical form with a rational denominator? Okay, so we don't want a radical on the bottom, my bad. I didn't think about that. I was just like, oh, they just want a simplified radical. I don't know why the other part went over my head. Okay, let's do this. So sine of one half is the formula square root one minus cosine x over Two. I guess they use the theta, but same thing. So let me use the theta over here. One minus cosine of theta over two. So this is the formula for sine one half theta. And then let's see what they gave us. Okay, they gave us cosine. Cool. So all we have to do is plug it in and simplify. So let's plug it in because they gave us cosine. That means we don't have to draw the triangle anymore. We just needed cosine in our formula. So we have one minus, and then our cosine was just one half. And then we put it over two. So all we did right here is we plugged it in and then we just need to simplify. So in simplifying, let's do the numerator first. So the numerator has one minus one half. So simplifying or changing the one so it has the same denominator is two over two minus the one half. And so when you simplify that, the two over two minus one half on the top, all you have to do is subtract the numerator. So two minus one is one. And then you keep the denominator as two, and this is still over two. And then we need to combine this into one fraction. So one half divided by two means you're gonna combine the two denominators. So one on the top, and then two times two gives us four on the bottom. Okay. Any questions up till here? Pause the video. So 
So let's keep simplifying. So the square root of one fourth, I can't, we kind of like tackled that in the previous problem. Um, this is essentially, where should I write? I'll just write over here. This is the square root of one over the square root of four. And then that is simplifiable to one on the top and two on the bottom. So in this case, we don't need to do any other steps to rationalize the denominator because there's already no radical in the denominator, but we can just enter one half now. Are there any questions for this one? All right, let's go enter this one in and then I'll give you guys more examples. So, um, one half. Okay, let's do another one. Cool, so sine one half x in simplest radical form with a rational denominator. Screenshot. Okay, so sine one half x, we have the formula is square root of one minus cosine x over two. Okay, and then let's see what they gave us. They gave us the cosine is one third. So let's plug it in to our formula. One minus one third over two. And then simplifying. On the top, we have three over three minus one third. On the bottom is still over two. Simplifying some more, three thirds minus one third, you subtract across the top, so three minus one is two thirds. I'll write it like this, two thirds over two. And then to simplify this even further, because that's what we need to do, we have square root of two on top, and we are combining the two denominators, so three times two is six, so square root of two over six, but this is simplifiable. Two over six is the same thing as one over three. So we have the square root of one third. Before simplifying further into rationalizing the denominator, which was the mistake I made on the first one. Before I do this, um, are there any questions? All right, so now we need to rationalize the denominator. So this is simplest radical form, but we need to rationalize the denominator. So I'm gonna rewrite the square root of one third as square root of one over square root of three, because everything was under the square root. So I'm just splitting up the square root now. And then simplifying that, square root of one is just one, but radical three is just a radical three. Now, we don't want the radical on the denominator. That was my mistake the first time. We don't want a radical on the denominator. So to fix this, we're going to multiply by that radical on top and bottom. So we multiply on the top and bottom so that we're not changing the value, the amount of the fraction. We're just rewriting it so it looks different. So multiply by radical three over radical three. On the top, one times radical three is just radical three. On the bottom, Radical three times radical three gives us three. So our final answer would be radical three over three. Okay, now I'm gonna pause this and see if there are any questions. Radical three over three. Okay, let's do another one. Okay. Oh, they keep giving us signs. Do we want something else? Let's do something else. Oh, okay, I'll just do that. Okay, this one's a cosine. Cool, so cosine one half x in simplest radical form. Let me write out our formula. Cosine is one plus cosine x over two. And then they gave us Cosine, so that's great. Let's plug it in. One plus three fifths over two. So just replacing the cosine x with the cosine that they gave us. So one plus three fifths over two. And then um, changing the one 
to a 5 over 5 so that it has the same denominator. And then combining the numerator fractions, so 5 fifths plus 3 fifths gives us 8 over 5. And then it's still over 2. So we need to combine the two denominators. So eight stays on the top, but the two denominators on the bottom, five times two gives us 10. Now this is simplifiable. You divide the top and bottom by two, and then you get four over five. So we have square root of four fifths. But we're not done yet. We need to put this in a... Uh, the form of the rational denominator. So I'm going to continue that on the top section because it's where we have space. So square root of four fifths is the same thing as square root of four over square root of five. Let's see if we can simplify this right now. Okay, so square root of four, that gives us two. Square root of five stays on the bottom. However, we don't want the square root of five on the bottom. So what we need to do is multiply the top and the bottom by radical five. And that will help us move the radical to the top part. So 2 times radical 5 on the top is 2 radical 5. On the bottom, radical 5 times radical 5 just gives us 5. So this would be our final answer. 2 radical 5 over 5. I'm going to pause here again and see if you guys have any questions. 2 radical 5 over 5. 2 radical 5 5. Over okay, let's see if I can get a tangent in here. I know there were tangents because I looked at it. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so let's do this tangent problem and then I'll call it done for the examples. So tangents formula is 1 minus cosine. I'll just put a y because that's the letter they're using. Gosh. There we go. 1 plus cosine y. There we go. So here's our formula for tangent. And then they gave us cosine. So luckily for us, we don't have to draw a triangle. But we've done so many triangle drawings in the past. I feel like you guys know how to draw the triangle now. So 1 minus the 3 fifths over 1 plus the 3 fifths. Okay, so similar to what we've been doing before, we just want the 1 to have the same denominator as the fraction that we have. So we want 5 fifths minus 3 fifths on the top. Let me zoom in a bit. 5 fifths minus 3 fifths on the top. And we want 5 fifths plus 3 fifths on the bottom. <clears throat> just following our formula, but changing the 1 to a 5 over 5 so that we can subtract properly. Okay, so when we subtract 5 fifths minus 3 fifths, you get 2 fifths on the top. On the bottom, 5 fifths plus 3 fifths, you get 8 fifths. So 8 fifths on the bottom. Now we have a fraction with, okay, like a fraction divided by a fraction, but both of those have divided by 5 in it. So you can actually just cancel out the divided by 5s. Just like that. Scribble that out. You can cancel those parts out, leaving you with radical 2 over 8. I don't know what's going on with that part. I don't know why it kept coming up. Okay. <laughs> so 2 and 8 are kept, and then the over 5s can be canceled out with each other. So we have two eighths. Now that is simplifiable. That is simplifiable to one fourth because two and eight are both divisible by two. So two divided by two is one. Eight divided by two is four. And we get radical one fourth. It seems this one I have a lot of space here, so I'm just going to continue it here. Um, this is radical one over radical four. Let's see if we can simplify that. So square root of one is one. Square root of 4 is 2, and there's no need to rationalize the denominator here, so 1 half will be our final answer. Before I type this in, I'll pause the video to see if you guys have any questions.
All right, let's go enter this in. One half. And then, yeah, okay. So to get the final answer, you have to square the top and bottom. Yeah, square root the top and bottom. Let me go back to the picture. Is this it? Yeah, so we just square rooted the top and the bottom. So we square rooted the one and we square rooted the four and then we got one half. One half was as simplified as it gets, but if we were left with a radical on the bottom, then we would need to rationalize the denominator. But in this case, we didn't have to do that because it's just one half. Okay, any questions? Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now.